Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, as you can see, I'm back here at the modules today because I have a test that I want to perform that requires something on the modules themselves. And it goes back to a comment that I got from one of the viewers here, Jason Edwards. And Jason said that he was having problems with his IP digital switch machines creating a short circuit with his PSXX circuit breakers every time that he would try to throw a turnout. So one of the things I want to do today is test that with my IP digitals and with my PSXX and see if I have the same problems. So stick around, we'll take a look at that. Also, while we're talking about DCC Concepts products, I have a few other items that I picked up from DCC Concepts while I was in England back in November that I want to share with you. So we'll take a look at those as well as finding out whether or not IP digital switch machines are causing a short circuit in combination with the PSXX circuit boards. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Now first I want to show you what I have set up here for the test. We're going to start, I've got an NCE Smart Booster SB5. And if you remember, I did show in one of my previous videos, and I'll put a link to that above me here, uh, how to convert the NCE power cab to a 5 amp system using the SB5. So that's giving me 5 amps of power going out to the uh, track. Now, in line with that, the power goes out and into one of these DCC concepts alpha meters. And I did a review on the alpha meter a year or two ago, I can't remember when, and I'll put a link to that. But as you can see, we're seeing 13.76 volts on the, going out to the track and 0.26 amps being drawn. Now at this point, I have eight Soundtracks equipped locomotives on the track. They're just sitting there idling, so they're not pulling a lot of amperage. That's why we're only seeing a small readout right here. So that's 0.27 amps at 13.75 volts, and that goes out through these two wires to the PSXX circuit breaker. Now I did do a video review of the PSXX. I also did a review on how to program it. And I'll put links to both of those videos up above me here so that you can take a look at those if you're interested. So the power comes out of the alpha meter and goes into the circuit board here on the PSXX. That's daisy chained to a second one here. This is the one that I'm actively using. I programmed this uh, to have a trip current of three amps. So we're, we're not challenging at all at a quarter of an amp. Then we have two wires here, this green and this red, that go out and are connected to the DCC track power bus. Now I'll also point out, I have nine IP digital switch machines installed here on the layout, operating the points on the layout. And all of those IP digitals are connected to the same power bus, the DCC power bus. So the current that they're drawing is going through this as well. So we're monitoring how much current the locomotives on the layout are using at any given time, how much power uh, the PSXX itself is using, and also when the IP digital switch machines are in motion, we will also see an increase in amperage as a result of those motors throwing and operating the points on the layout switches. I'm going to operate a locomotive here on the layout, so watch the voltage and the amperage change as the motors and the decoder starts drawing some current. Not much of a change, really. We'll see a slight drop in the voltage, as expected. We've gone up a little bit in the amperage draw. Not significant. I'll bring it back up. Okay. Now what I want to do is throw some switches. So I'm going to start with number eight, which is uh, just one of them. It doesn't matter uh, which one, but we're going to start with one 
uh, IP digital switch machine and watch this value here and also be aware. If a short occurs on the layout, this green light here is going to go off and there will be a red LED down here that will illuminate, telling you that there's a short. So let's go ahead and watch. I'm going to hit number eight. I think you can probably hear it cycling. So we went up um, about, we went up to 0.38 uh, milliamps there. Not a lot of a change. Okay, let's go back. 0 0.27, 0 0.28, it's going to go up, peaked at what, 0.35. So, you know, a, a minor ch increase in the amperage as the uh, switch machine was operating. Now, let's go ahead, I have one here on the layout, a crossover that uses two turnouts that throw simultaneously. So we've got two IP digital switch machines that will be operating at the same time. So we should see a significant increase in amperage here. So let's throw that one. Okay, it's gone up to 0.45 and dropped back down now. Again, we didn't lose anything over here. So, you know, even if this was set at one amp, we would not be challenging at all. So I'm not seeing anything at all. Now, let me go ahead, we'll throw a couple of more, number five. That's a single, so it's going to go 0.27 up to, you know, 0.35, so 0.08. Okay, not, not a significant amount of current. Again, we're seeing nothing happening here on the circuit breaker. So I'm going to start throwing these back to their original position. Now what happens with an IP digital switch machine is unlike with a tortoise switch machine where the motor actually keeps running but stalls at the end of the throw and keeps drawing power, an IP digital switch machine does not. Once it reaches the end of the throw, uh, the circuitry shuts power off to that motor and it waits until it gets a command to go the other direction. So I'm going to do that and we'll watch. We're at 0.26. So it's going to uh, peak out at 0.33. So that's about what we're seeing, 70 milliamps, uh, if I'm doing my math right off the top of my head here. And we'll do number six. And I'll tell you that I have cycled every switch on this layout, every IP digital switch machine, all nine of them. I cannot get this circuit breaker to trip. So at this point, I can say that at least for the PSXX I have and the IP digital switch machines, I've not had a single problem with it. Now, previously, before I installed the PSXX on here, I had this NCE EB1 circuit breaker installed. And again, never had a single problem with the IP digital switch machines tripping the current. I have a large number of IP digital switch machines installed on the Piedmont Southern layout, the HO scale layout. And again, I have a PSX board on that one. Never have had a single problem with the circuit board tripping. Consequently, I cannot find any evidence based on the number of IP digital switch machines that I have and have tested and the various circuit breakers that I've tested that they're going to be a problem with any of these devices. I'm at a loss, therefore, to explain how this individual that contacted me uh, might have such a problem. One explanation could be that he could have an out-of-spec uh, device. He could have had bad components installed uh, in the circuits on the IP digitals. He could have had a bad component installed on the PSXX. There could be something else going on with either of the circuits on these. The only way to be able to test that would be to swap these out with various other devices and find out if there's a problem that follows one or the other. For example, if you put a different circuit breaker on it and it was still in that one trip too, that would indicate that there was something going on with the, IP, with the uh, switch machines. If on the other hand, this guy was put on a different layout and it continued to trip with some other type of switch machines, then I would suspect that this was bad. So without a lot of other testing scenarios and being able to set those up, I really can't answer the question. 
uh, as to what it is. It could also be bad wiring on the layout, something like that going on. So at this point, it's very hard for me to diagnose what the individual that sent in that comment is, is seeing and what's causing the problem on his model railroad. So I'd be interested if any of you other guys have seen issues with either the PSXX or the IP Digitals or the combination of the two with phantom trips like this occurring, please let me know. If you're having no problems at all, let me know that too because we want to be able to see whether or not there's anything going on here and I just can't see any problems at all with the equipment that I have available to me at this time. While we're on the subject of DCC Concepts products, let me show you a few things here on the workbench. Uh, one, to answer a question that came up after a previous video, and I wanted to get back to you about that, as well as a few other items. So let's take a look down here on the bench top at what I have to show you here. Now, in my video that I did a couple of weeks ago on DCC Trek Power, I showed you this guy here. This is the DCC Concepts bus suppressor, and it is their equivalent of an RC filter, like I've shown you how to make in the past, and also like NCE cells. Someone asked me in a follow-up comment what the third component is on here, because normally there's two components. So on this one we have a capacitor, and we have a resistor, so that's the resistor, capacitor, filter. But what's this little black thing here that looks like a barrel? Well, if you look, it looks like a diode, doesn't it? Well, and that's really what it is. Uh, I was able to peek underneath of the component and printed on the board underneath of the diode is a symbol representing what it is. And I was able to see just enough of that to be able to tell that this apparently is a TVS diode. Now, I talked about TVS diodes a few uh, videos ago, and basically what they are is they're a special diode and they allow current to flow in one direction, just like a normal diode, until you get up to a certain voltage. It will suppress anything above that. So let's say you've got a TVS diode with a rating of 20 volts. Well, it's going to allow current to flow through the circuit up to 20 volts. And then when it hits 20 volts, it's still going to allow 20 volts to pass through, but the excess will be clamped. It will not be allowed to go through. So it's going to protect your circuit from any excessive voltage spikes that are occurring as a result of transient shorts, those kind of things that occur on the layout that I talked about in the video on track power. So that's what that little third one is for. And to be honest with you, until about oh, six months ago, I had not even heard of a TVS diode. And now everywhere I look, these things are popping up in circuits. So these are apparently are very commonly used in circuits to protect the circuit against these transient voltage spikes that can occur. And it's apparently a matter of fact of electronics and something you deal with by installing these little guys on it. It benefits DCC because every time a locomotive goes through a turnout set against it, it causes a transient voltage spike. And this little guy will filter it out. And then these others, they act as other filters to help clean up the DCC signal. So that's what these guys are for. And right now, as far as I know, uh, DCC Concepts is the only one making a uh, RC filter, or as they call it, their bus suppressor, uh, with a TVS diode on it. So it's worth taking a look at. And again, they sell these in a two-pack. And they are listed as a DCD BSS2. And you can check with the guys at Iron Planet Hobbies in the U.S. And of course with Rails of Sheffield and DCC Concepts themselves in the U.K. Now, since today we've been talking about circuit breakers and IP digital switch machines and the interaction between them, this is DCC's Concepts intelligent DCC circuit breaker designed specifically to protect your DCC decoders when you get a short on the layout. And I talked about this also, I believe, in the video that I did on track power. So you can go back and take a look at that review of it. Uh, very easy to set up. You know, your power goes in here, track power goes out here to the track. It has capabilities for attaching a warning uh, LED, 
You can have a manual reset switch attached here. And right here they use a jumper to allow you to program the address and some other features of this unit. On this side, they use these jumpers here to establish the trip current. So right now this one is set at 4.5 amps. You can set it as high as 5 amps. So for more information and to, to actually download the manual, you can go to the DCC Concepts website. You can purchase these from them, from Rails of Sheffield. You can get these from Iron Planet Hobbies in the US. And again, let's see right here, it is the DCC IPCB. So you can look that up that way. Now something else that I picked up uh, from DCC Concepts while I was in England last fall, is this great little screw and driver set. And they come with three of these anodized aluminum uh, handles. It's rotating, got a little rotating end here so that you can hold it and twist at the same time. It's got four little uh, rubber inserts for increased grip. And then right in here, there's a little magnet that is inserted in it and allows you to insert a tip in there and it's going to stay in by magnetic attraction. So it's very quick and easy to change it out when you need a different tip on the screwdriver. Plus you got three different handles to work with. And it comes with an assortment of Phillips head tips as well as regular flathead tips. And in addition to the screwdriver tips, it comes with three nut drivers that um, are really handy. I found these very useful for working on steam locomotives. They're great for the little screws on the uh, drivers. And they come in a two, two and a half, and a three millimeter size. So it's gonna cover a wide variety of your modeling needs. So again, these are available from DCC Concepts, Rails of Sheffield, and also from Iron Planet Hobbies, possibly. I haven't checked to see if Iron Planet Hobbies uh, sells these. And uh, this is listed as their DCT SND 12 set. Okay, and finally, one thing that I have also found very useful since I got back uh, is this heavy duty track cutter made by DCC Concepts. And as you can see, this is your standard Zuron uh, track cutter. And you can see that the jaws on this are much, much heavier. And as you can see, they will cut right through a piece of rail without any problems at all. And it gives it a very nice clean finish. There's no burr at all on there. Just a little bit on the bottom is all I can feel with my finger. So check out the DCC Concepts Heavy Duty Track Cutters. And those are listed as their DCT-HTC. So Heavy Duty Track Cutters. So that's about it as far as uh, things that I brought back with me. I do have a few other things that we'll be looking at in a future video. But for right now, this is all I wanted to share with you today. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. You know, I was really happy to find out that I could not create a short circuit with the PSX using my IP Digital switch machines because I've never had any problems with them at all, either here on the module with the EB1 circuit breaker or with the PSX circuit breaker on my larger layout, the Piedmont Southern. So it was good to see that the PSXX and the IP Digitals seem to get along together fairly well. I'm really at a loss to understand, as I said, why Jason was having uh, such problems with his setup. So hopefully it's something he'll be able to debug, find out whether or not it has to do with the wiring, or maybe he's got a bad component on either his PSXX circuit board or one of his IP Digital switch machines. So that's it for today. Have a great week, have a great weekend, and I'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.